Hello, I am Sophie Edsbexter and this is my most requested live Ask Anything chat. My current song is called Murder on the Dance Floor and I want to thank iHeartRadio and Romeo for having me on the show. Um, they have said I can skip questions, but I'm quite game actually. I think I'm just happy to answer what you have for me. So Jenna from Toronto, Ontario. What was your favourite song to dance to growing up? Oh, so many things, but I have a really vivid memory of dancing and performing the full dance routine to Open Your Heart by Madonna, complete with the chair. Um, I was probably about seven or eight. Uh, the video features Madonna in a uh, peep show. And I remember being quite confused as to why my dad wasn't more impressed with my dancing because I thought I did it really well. <laughs> oh, by the way, if you hear any background noise, it's because my kids are on um, Easter holidays. So this is as close to quiet as it's going to get. Um, Alex from Sacramento, California. So Sophie, I'm going to your San Francisco concert on the 30th of May. I just want to say hi. Well, hello to you too. I can't wait. I'm super excited. Firstly, it's my first ever um, US run of dates, which is lovely, but I've also always wanted to go to San Francisco and I've never been, and everybody tells me I love it. So can you let me know, please, some um, good vintage shops? Because that's what I'm gonna try and find. Lana from Nashville, Tennessee. When do you know it's time to release new music? What triggers your mind that it's the right time? I like that question because actually it's true. How, do, how does it work with the cycle? I guess every artist is different, but for me, it's always felt like a bit of a circular thing. So um, I kind of release a new album, tour the album, and then start getting like mm, nice feelings of new music. Where's that playing? I'm on the drums. That is my kids playing drums. I said to my husband, can you look after the small ones for a minute? He's taking them to play drums. <laughs> Sorry, if that's a bit annoying. <laughs> I was like, wow, something's really weird happening outside. Oh, it's my children. Um, Yes, but triggers the right time. It's like an itch that needs to be strapped, actually, making new music. It's a nice feeling. Uh, Sherry from Seattle, Washington. Were you born Ellis Bexter or did you pick the Bexter up along the way? <laughs> I like that my dad's the Bexter. Just picked my dad up along the way. Um, also, I love the name Sherry, just coincident as a side thing. My children are so flipping noisy. Um, I was born Ellis Bexter. So my mum is called Janet Ellis. My dad is Robin Bexter. And so they combined their names for me and then they actually um, separated not that long after. So as far as I'm aware, I'm the only Ellis Bexter out there. If anyone else is an Ellis Bexter, get in touch. Love to, love to say hi. Time from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Take us back a few years. When did you first get the call that somebody wanted to sign you to a label and what label was it? Um, so take us back a few years, 25. <laughs> So I'm about to turn 45 now. I'm bouncing a flipping ball. Um, and Ray, yeah. I'm just filming something. Can you stop bouncing the ball, please? Oh, okay, Jesse, just for a minute. Okay. Thanks. What are you doing, Mommy? I'm just recording some question and answers for the Ask Anything um, most requested live show on iHeartRadio. I'm just filming it now. Don't come over, Bubba. No, I can't. I've nearly finished. Okay. I won't be long now, okay? Good, I'm glad your hand's better. Ray, shut the door. Thank you. This is my life, people. This is my life. Um, I first signed a record deal. Actually, it was quite dramatic. I was in a band when I was 16 called The Audience. And we would do gigs uh, not on school nights. Um, when I was at school, my mum was quite strict about that. I was allowed to do the band, but I wasn't allowed to go out and do it on a school night. Um, and then we started getting interest from record labels. And then by the time we got through six gigs, we had six offers from six labels. So um, the guy in my band that wrote all the songs, Billy, he decided to use my 18th birthday as the marker for when we decided who to sign to. So as the clock, clock struck midnight on April the, to mark the start of April the 10th, I turned 18 and then we decided to sign, first of all, I signed to Mercury, part of Universal. So um, the reason why 18 was significant is because you can sign a deal without having to be have a co-signature with your parent when you get to 18. If I'd signed before that, my parents would have had to co-sign. So he used it as a stalling tactic, really. But it meant that it was quite an exciting way to turn 18. And I can really remember that night and all the different labels were there and none, none of them knew who it was we were gonna sign to. So it was quite exciting. Um, 
and that excitement continued uh well for a good year and then uh, it all started to get a bit wrong when I was drunk by the time I was 21 but that's another story that's another story time Anton from Casper Wyoming what aspect of your musical journey are you enjoying the most so far oh all of it I love the twists and turns in the roads actually Anton I'm up for the whole thing I like the adventure I like not knowing what happens next um I find I find the, the bits where things aren't working as well as you hoped, reassuringly, I know that they will, well, things will get better. And when things are going a bit supersonic and everything's a bit fast, I find I take comfort in the fact that things will slow down. So somewhere in the roller coaster of it, I'm having a very nice time, thanks. Grace from Memphis, Tennessee. How did Murder and Dance Floor come together? So Murder and Dance Floor, um, its parents are me and a talented singer-songwriter called Greg, who is part of the New Radicals, actually. And um, Greg and I, Greg Alexander, he, um, he'd started the, the kernel of the song Murder on the Dance Floor, and he very generously um, said that if I could finish the song off, then I could take it on and have it, uh, you know, release it. And that's what happens. We met around that time, that was 2001. And then we ended up working together quite a lot, actually, Greg and I. We wrote quite a few of my singles together and another guy called Matt Rowe. And uh, yeah, lots of happy memories, actually. And a lot of people that I met around that time that I still work with, which is a happy thing. Emmanuel from Torino, Italy. Oh, I'm in Italy right now, Emmanuel. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you for your concert in Milan, Italy. You, the queen of disco, Richard Pablo, your support holiday sidewinder, fantastic. Now, more than a question, is my prayer to you? Come back in Italy soon. Well, Emmanuel, I'm sure you didn't mean on holiday, <laughs> but I am actually here for our Easter break because I love Italy. And um, thanks for name-checking the band. And um, Jackson, my brother, he plays drums. Richard is my husband. Pablo's a good friend. Holiday Sidewinder supported me on four tours now. She's brilliant. And Milan was just excellent. We're always happy to come here. What a joy. You're very lucky to be living in such a gorgeous country. Hmm. Uh, I thought someone was about to come in again. Tanya from Windsor, Ontario. Can you say the name of your song in a sinister voice? Murder on the dance floor. That probably wasn't that sinister. I think I'm quite sinister. I, mean, I can be quite scary when my kids tell me I'm not. Lena from Munich, Germany. Being influenced by great female artists before you, who are your favourites from growing up? Oh, so many. I loved um, everyone from... Madonna to Bjork to PJ Harvey to Belinda Carlisle, Betty Boo, Kathy Dennis. Just, oh, I was obsessed with music from a really, really small age. Um, I remember watching Tony Basil sing Hey Mickey when I was only about three or four. It's one of my earliest memories. And I just loved performers and the intensity and the excitement and sometimes the oddness. Tony Basil performed Hey Mickey in quite a weird way and I really liked it. I think I'm being called. Avery from Chicago, Illinois. What perfume do you use? Nice question, Avery. Um, so for about 20 years, I used exactly the same one all the time, which was Salon Rose by Arjun Provocateur. And now that I'm a grown-up, now that I'm a grown-up, I've decided to have more than one for different days. So I've got another one that's um, a diptyque one that I just think is gorgeous. It's called Orphion. Oh, dear. I think we're okay. Mallory from Henderson, Nevada. Where did you play your first gig as Sophie Ellis Baxter? Well, I've always been Sophie Ellis Baxter, so hard to answer it if I'm not being too literal. But if I take it more build as my own name, that would have been oh, a really terrible gig I did in 2001 after I'd signed to Polydor. So I was just making, I'd made my first solo album. So I had songs like Murder and Take Me Home and Music Gets the Best of Me. And I did this showcase gig and I said it was terrible. Not because I think I was particularly awful myself. I was probably like, all right, but it was my first ever solo gig. I was nervous. I'd never performed without my band with me. And I didn't realize, but the label had basically invited everybody along to this gig, including lots of critics. And I had some very harsh reviews and, that felt horrible. I felt, I was like 21. I was just feeling my way about how I wanted to perform and it was just savage, but hey, it's all right. It gets the tougher skin and all that. Dawn from Cleveland, Ohio. Do you have a closet at home just for performance clothes or do you mix your personal clothes in with them? I mix them. They're all in together. 
sequins and extra jeans. It's a complete mess. In fact, Dawn, if you've got some spare time and you fancy helping me with the wardrobe clear out, please come over because I can really do with some help. It's a bit of a disaster. But at the same time, it's quite fun. You never know what you're gonna pull out of a rail. Oh, I've actually nearly finished, brilliant. Nicola from Miami, Florida. Can you describe your go-to childhood dance movie? Grease, there we go. Thank you so much for asking me all these amazing questions. I've loved it. Um, it's a little bit quieter now, isn't it? Thank you for watching my Ask Anything chat. Thank you to Romeo. Thank you to iHeartRadio. Um, it says here, my current song is called Murder on Dance Floor. It is. Enjoy. And sorry about all the erroneous noise, but it has been nice being shut in a room from you. And after I've finished recording, I might pretend that this is going on a bit longer just so I can enjoy the peace and quiet. Thank you.